information and networking for early career cybersecurity professionals. My name is Keith Otterberg, and I'm the Director of Marketing for the College of Extended and International Education at Cal State Dominguez Hills. I'll be your host today. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on our website and on social media platforms shortly after today's session. To begin, feel free to download the Cybersecurity Information Kit for details about the program and additional resources uh, covered in the webinar. That link is bit dot ly slash csudh dash mscy dash info kit. We've provided a, a link in the chat panel for those who are participating live, and it will also be available via a follow-up email to attendees as well as on our website. This session will last about 45 minutes. The cybersecurity program coordinator, Dr. Mosin Beheshti, will give a 25-minute presentation about the program, followed by a Q&A. Please ask your questions in the Q&A section of your platform, and please do not use the chat to ask questions as we will use the chat to provide information, links, and other information uh, about the program. So let's begin. Dr. Beheshti, take it away. Thank you, Kate. Hi, everybody. Good morning. This is Mohsen Beheshti, Chair of Computer Science Department. Uh, I'm also the director for the Center of Excellence in Knowledge Management and Computational Science to provide opportunity for the uh, students at the college to uh, work in the area of their computing. Uh, there's also a Computing Alliance of Hispanic CERM institutions, which have been, a, uh, CSUDH has been a founding member of that alliance. And uh, we actually, uh, as part of this program, we try to uh, promote computing, uh, cyber security is being part of. Uh, my area of research is in network security, big data, data conversion, and uh, curriculum development. Uh, and I built this, uh, we built this cybersecurity program basically <clears throat> to provide uh, opportunity for students to, <clears throat> to be able to have, uh, uh, have the need of the nation, which is the field of computing. As you heard from the uh, keynote speaker earlier today, there is about 2 million job opportunities in this field. And this is the field that actually it provides a good uh, opportunity for students to, to get to them and then be successful. So with that, uh, we're gonna go over the uh, agenda for the uh, presentation. Uh, so here at, in the agenda, uh, the outline of the uh, presentation would be, we'll talk a little bit about the, what cyber uh, security is. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the job market, uh, uh, the importance of the cyber security, especially nowadays. Uh, during the pandemic, and specifically to be uh, to be more specific, uh, the job outlook and the prediction that uh, you know Labor Bureau says uh, how the projection talks about the cybersecurity field and how uh, promising it is, and we also talk about the program that we have, uh, Master of Science in Cybersecurity, to give you some more information about the program. Um, next, we uh, we're going to talk about the cybersecurity topics. So. Uh, when you, uh, cybersecurity covers a wide range of activities, including technical and non-technical. Uh, you know, it, it, it has about risk management, networks, cyber forensics, hacking prevention, in especially nowadays, the cloud computing becomes very important because everything's in cloud. Also the policy and the management are uh, important. So there are different aspects of cybersecurity that uh, you, you need to know. So when you look at the job market, well, when you're trying to see what the job and the cybersecurity involves um, on the next slide, we'll, we'll, we'll see that uh, careers uh, in cybersecurity may be technical or managerial, and most probably will require a teamwork. It is, uh, the field is exciting. It is definitely not boring, and you will learn new things almost every day, uh, especially the field that you are interested in, each and every one of those, areas specific, they call them. Sometimes they call them security analyst, architect, administrator, um, or chief information security officer, which do different aspects of it, some managerial, some more technical. One thing that you always remember, there is no nothing boring about cybersecurity. And as the uh, keynote speaker mentioned again, this morning, uh, you need to learn to learn like a sponge, you have to learn new things because you're always behind the step if you don't learn. So every day you're gonna learn new things. And that's the beauty of the field that it keeps you uh, up to date all the time. Uh, cybersecurity field has one of the best careers for years to come. 
so as you see, this uh, projection is about 31% increase uh, between 2019-2029, and that compared to other fields is quite uh, impressive to see how it is. And I, you know, even with the pandemic and things that's happening, I, I foresee that that's going even higher than what you see right now. Uh, so if you um, if you try to look at the work uh, demand, the workforce demand here, um, you will see the number says it all. Uh, you know, we're talking about the uh, 300,000 job opportunities uh, on field in cybersecurity. But, you know, I just heard from the uh, uh, keynote speaker today that he's talking about 2 million job opportunities uh, nationwide or worldwide to be exact. So there is a huge opportunity, again, about the cybersecurity. But even in this state here, we have about 35,000 job opportunities. And even in the area that we are here, uh, LA, Long Beach, Anaheim area, there is about 10,000 job opportunities. But these opportunities are for the, those who actually know the field. So you need to apply to this field to be able to know how to uh, do the cybersecurity activities. And that's why there is a program that we have, the certificate that we have to actually making sure that you are up to date and you know how to use these skills to be able to work and succeed in, in, the, in your field. So um, looking at the... Uh, Looking at the growing needs, uh, as, as I mentioned, cybersecurity will grow by up to 10% in uh, 221, sorry, gonna, it's gonna continue. Uh, as the range of the threats broaden, new vulnerabilities emerge and the frequency of attacks increase. So in a base case scenario, it's gonna be 10% increase. In a worst case scenario, it's gonna be six, 7% increase. So always there's an increase, no matter what you say, uh, no matter how you look at it. Looking at the codes, uh, let's look at some of the codes that they are there, especially the, the two that I'm uh, very uh, interested to go over is the second one, which is there are two types of companies, those who have been hacked and those who do not yet know they have been hacked. So that says that all the companies, everything is going to be hackable. You just need to make sure that you are aware of it and don't allow them to make the damages that they intend to do. And the last code that if you look at it says, it takes 20 years to build a reputation and few minutes of cyber incidents to ruin it. And that shows against the value of cybersecurity and this feed and how important it is for all the companies to have someone in cybersecurity in the field at their business, because it is actually makes or breaks the company. Losing the data, everything's about the data. Losing the data, that means company can go away. So this uh, cybersecurity field is important and you need to be consider yourself you are actually have a big responsibility under your belt uh, taking that uh, job. So you need to make sure that you feel comfortable and having the education and taking the courses and taking the uh, uh, needed uh, certificates that actually prepares you for the area that you're going to. Uh, last year, uh, our program won an award for being the best for its curriculum, uh, being effective and being affordable. So our program, we're going to talk about it toward the end of the uh, this session. But you know, there, there are actually huge demand here because of the program that we have, because of the communication and connection we have with the industry and uh, other activities around us. Uh, we have a, you know ongoing activities in the cybersecurity. We have a LA coalition. We work with them. We actually develop some programs as part of the cybersecurity with them. We are actually with the conferences that we had, this being one of them, and there is a GMIS, Great My in a STEM, um, which is part of the CASI conference we have every year. We took students of ours over there, and out of uh, 12, 14 students that we went there, 12 of them got job right there and then, because that's a venue for the recruitment. So we actually, as part of this uh, program that we have here, not only we educate, we also provide opportunity for the students for the internship and employment opportunities that comes up. Uh, the one other thing that we have here is about the students here are very active at CSUDH. Uh, we have a number of clubs, cybersecurity club, CASI club. And as you know, this Total Hack conference is actually being driven and uh, hosted by students. Uh, so that shows the, uh, the dedication and commitment of the students that we have. And also we support them uh, through the process by, as I said, going through these uh, conferences, these alliances that provides opportunity for you to find a job, or actually if you want to continue with the education for the PhD and go beyond. So those are all some of the uh, uh, 
side opportunities that you have, not only with the program that you have, but also supporting for the students uh, to make sure they are successful in the field that their studies. So if you look at the faculty expertise, uh, which is gonna be the next uh, slide you're talking about, um, cybersecurity covers a wide range of areas and the faculty expertise uh, could be in technical, managerial, uh, policy in the research. And of course there are uh, different uh, real uh, faculty with, uh, expertise outside of the academia, like in the industry, uh, or some of them actually have their own companies. So we have actually faculty teaching our classes they have different expertise and trying to provide that knowledge to our students to make them ready for the workforce. Uh, if you look at the cybersecurity faculty that we have here, we have a team of knowledgeable, experienced, and dedicated instructors. Some of them, as I mentioned earlier, they do heavy research in cybersecurity, if that's what your interest is. They actually, some of them own companies in cybersecurity that can share you with, the, with their experience. And another thing that we have here, actually we have uh, some of the students who are in our uh, classes are actually themselves in the field of uh, cybersecurity. And you can actually gain knowledge from them. And at the same time, they provide you with the opportunity to actually, sometimes there is job opportunities at their company and they can uh, tell you. So there is a lot of activities uh, going on. I mean, uh, if you notice uh, students that we have in the, as part of the program, they've gone to, uh, high tech and uh, some non-tech companies that require, as I said, cybersecurity like Microsoft, JPL, Stanley Healthcare, Bank of America, uh, Northrop Grumman. These are some of the companies that actually hire their students and they're happy with their performance and they continue uh, to uh, recruit our students. And looking at the program, we constantly update our curriculum. Uh, the, the reason is this, the field requires us to do that and we are, constantly bringing new courses or adding new modules to the program. But in general, the program is a 30 course or 30 units or 10 course program. It might take you uh, a year or a year and a half, depends how you wanna go. We offer courses in spring, fall, and summer. So there is six courses that are, co that are uh, considered to be uh, core courses, the one in the red that you see, and the yellow ones, there are elective courses that actually they allow you to focus in the area that you're interested in the most. So you take four courses from the list of electives and you need to take the six core courses and that would complete your uh, degree in uh, cybersecurity, Master of Science in Cybersecurity here at Dominguez Hills. Uh, if you uh, look at the, uh, uh, the advantage of having a master in cybersecurity, you will see the Master of Science in Cybersecurity provides you with two years of experience keeps you current in the field, and you will be doing practical work in the field. That's basically what we provide you with the Master of Science Cybersecurity. So when you try to apply for a job, getting the master, that means you have two years of experience. And some of the companies, they do require experience, and that actually uh, could actually be answered to that requirement for the job opportunities. For the program that we have here in uh, admission requirements, obviously uh, to be admitted to the program, you need to have a bachelor degree in computer technology or a related field and a GPA of 2.5 or above. Of course, this is uh, for the, uh, for the uh, students who are in the field of computing. But if your degree is not in a technical degree or a computer technology, then you will uh, be required to have some leveling courses. And uh, the leveling courses is basically we're talking about three two unit courses and uh, they just provide you with information and the foundation to be able to actually go through the graduate degree graduate programs and make a smooth transition to to that program so those who do not have a degree in computer science and i think one of the question was regarding that they can still apply for the program and these leveling courses the three two unit courses which is total of six units it gives you a certificate uh, IT fundamental certificate, and also provides you with the entry to the master's program. Uh, so if you try to apply in fall, for example, because you can actually take this leveling course in the summer and start in fall like any other. So uh, to look at the tuition of the uh, program here, uh, you will see that the, the cost of the each unit is about 675 per unit. And uh, if you look at the total number of uh, uh, units that you need, that would be, be about uh, 
20,000, around 20,000 for the master program. For those who do require to take leveling courses um, that have a degree other than computer technology related work, that would add another 4,000 because those two course, uh, three courses, leveling courses needs to be taken ahead of time. But still, if you consider the, uh, the, 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 the cost of this program, compared to other uh, programs, you will see that these almost in many cases, half of some uh, other uh, places. And the idea, the, the, the reason is we developed this program for our community, for our body of students. And we're hoping that that would actually bring them the opportunity to succeed and take, to the, take them to the next level. Uh, looking at the uh, steps to apply for this program, uh, uh, you actually basically have to go to the Calisty apply, like any other program you apply there. And obviously, you're going to the program, uh, you, you uh, get the, the, uh, the copy of the transcript that needs to be submitted from your previous uh, uh, school to the school. And then uh, uh, it does require two letter of recommendation that's going to be sent uh, to this uh, email address you see down there, mscy at csudh.edu. That's where the review committee will look at that and then uh, give you a uh, response. And if there is any questions, they will be in communication with you. So they, they, they be, be careful to, or I'm, I'm, what I'm saying, just be, uh, feel free to contact us at any time. We have this information here. We have this MSCY site here because we want to make sure that uh, email, because we want to make sure that you can communicate with us. If you have any questions, we'd be more than happy to provide you with the uh, uh, answers to your question because this program is for you and you want to make sure that it gives you all the information you need to get there. Uh, the important dates for this uh, that you need to know is actually, as I said, the program can be uh, open during spring or fall semester for application. And there is a deadline for that. Uh, for the spring is August 1st. And for the spring, uh, for the, uh, uh, and, and that starts the application and it ends in uh, November 15th. Remember, number 15 is the deadline for the application. You still have a few more uh, weeks to actually, if you have some missing document to be sent out. So we make sure that between this range of one to 15 for the spring semester, you do finish your application. The same goes for the fall, January 15 to July 15 would be the time that you can apply for the program for the fall semester. And of course, uh, you know, a few weeks after uh, 15, you still have if some documents missing, you can actually send it out and get this done. Again, any question you might have, you can actually contact us through the uh, contact information here. Uh, send the email to mscy at csudh.edu. That comes to me and the committee. And we'll be more than happy to uh, answer any questions you might have regarding the program. Uh, I think uh, with that, I've kind of concluded the uh, information session here. And if there is any questions, uh, I'll be more than happy to answer. I think Keith is going to take it from here, and uh, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Very good. Thank you very much, Mosin. That was a very comprehensive and fast-paced presentation. Uh, I know it's a lot of information covered. And so if you have any questions for us, please, um, again, put them in the Q&A, and we will get to as many questions as we can. Um, so most, and I'm going to direct most of these to you. Uh, the first question is um, uh, regarding uh, math uh, preparation. Uh, are, is, is math preparation included in the uh, program or is there any preparation that they need prior to uh, getting into the program? So depending what math you have, the math requirement for the program is uh, statistics and uh, a little bit of the algebra. So what we have in the leveling course, the first leveling course that it has, it actually covers the math requirements that you have. So those three courses that you have, the first one covers a little bit of the statistics and math requirement that you need for the program. So if you don't have a math uh, necessary to get to this program, that uh, leveling course, uh, first leveling course would uh, take care of it. But the program itself does not have any math inside the graduate program itself. Very good. So if you're feeling a little, the, the takeaway is if you're feeling a little insecure about the math, you should take the uh, leveling courses in order to prepare. Yeah, I, I would I would recommend them to communicate with me and let me know what level of math you have and get tell you what, what you need, if you need it or not. Because this is a cybersecurity, it, it's, uh, it, 
it, it depends which area of the consultation you have. And the math requirements, is, as I said, is not as heavy as you trying to develop a, uh, the program. Because it's more about the technical aspect and learning the code and learning how to do the, the to use the tools to keep the system secure. Okay. So a related question. Uh, uh, what sort of programming languages are taught in the program? We are using Python because we see that Python is one of the languages being used. And we actually add a new course, Automation and Cloud, that actually goes even further. We do a little bit of Python in the leveling course, but we added some more in one of the elective courses to get you a little bit more in Python and how to do the automation. Because again, as I said, we, we see what is needed and what needs to be added when we add new modules or we add new courses. And that new course that we add, we make sure to re-emphasize the Python language, which is being heavily used in this field. Okay. Uh, next question. Um, for people who hold a bachelor's degree from a country other than the US, uh, uh, how do they know if they might uh, qualify for the program? The international students, like any other program, they have to apply through the... Uh, Oh, uh, so there's a, maybe I misunderstood. You have the degree just international, but probably you are not international student. You, you actually, because you had a question right now, so I'm assuming you are here in the States. What you need to do, you need to submit your transcript to be evaluated. And then if you have your bachelor degree uh, certified by the school, then I think you should be okay to apply for the program. Okay. And then the, the same uh, sort of... Um... Uh, procedures apply if the bachelor's degree was in something outside of computer science, then they need to take the leveling courses. Yes, yes. Okay. Again, if, yeah, if we, we look at the even the computer science, if you are in computer science, you might not having the cybersecurity courses. So we look at the transcript. You might have a program that might be uh, computer science and has no uh, security course. You might need to take a leveling course also. Computer technology is the program that covers all those security courses that are covered in this uh, level. So we look Got at it. the transcript and uh, we'll give you the information that you need. Okay, very good. Um, so I know that the, um, the program was on campus prior to the pandemic. And uh, so right now you're conducting the courses online. Do you anticipate that you will be on campus for the fall or is that still up in the air? For the fall, it's going to be online because it still is not uh, sure. But starting spring, we are hoping if things goes well, it's going to be in hybrid. I know that a lot of students do want to have interaction and we want to make sure that we have both options in available, meaning that we do a hybrid session that they do get the opportunity to come and do face-to-face -face with the instructor. But also, I know many of our students are working class students and they want to make sure that they have some time they can do from home. So we get both of those options available. So it's going to be some kind of hybrid uh, program, uh, hopefully starting the spring semester, if everything goes well. Okay. Um, if a student has a um, undergraduate degree, uh, do you recommend that they get out in uh, the workforce and work for a few years before going back for their master's, or do you recommend they go straight out of their bachelor's into the master's degree? So it, it, this is a good question. Uh, the, 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 the things comes in that uh, if you go to the work and then you can actually pull yourself back to the, uh, the program, that's great. But in many cases, when you go to the work, it becomes very difficult to come back. So if your goal is to get the master's degree, and if there is, uh, you know, you, you have the opportunity to do that, because I know there are some financial issues that you might not do it. I'm assuming that those choices, both choices are available for you. I think it would be better to get your master's degree because those two years that you do here is going to be two years of experience. So when you apply for a job, you're going to get a higher salary. When we had our students go to that conference, DMIS, we took 14 students, the undergrad were getting somewhere around 60, the grad were getting about 90. So you will see the difference in their salary right there by having a master's degree, the two years of experience. But again, I know there is a lot of other factors that involve that you need to consider which is outside of what I need to say here. I'm just saying if you have both options, I would think coming to the school might get you a better way to go out rather than going to work and come back. Okay. Um, a couple of uh, entrance sort of questions. First, uh, do they need to take the GRE? I believe the answer is no. Correct. Uh, and then the second is um, if their uh, GPA in their undergraduate years is less than stellar, um, 
what should they do? Should they uh, apply to be admitted conditionally? Should they try to get their GPA up somewhere else? What, what should they do? So, so there are sometimes students that, uh, well, we, we don't admit students under 2.0, definitely. But if you have hired, you know, this is a, the committee reviews that. So it, it, if you see the committee, the, your letter, we look at your letter too. So if your GPA is a little bit lower than what requires, I would highly recommend to write a letter and show your commitment and the justification, the personal statement. And if the committee sees that you know, there is potential, we will communicate with you and see what we need to do to get you there to the program. So there is opportunity uh, for if you are not 2.5, but you need to make sure you support, you provide a statement for the committee to look at it and be able to uh, start the conversation with you. Okay. Uh, next is uh, questions about international students. Um, first of all, the cost, the cost is the same for international students and for uh, domestic students. Correct. Uh, and then the other question is, um, uh, is the application process different? Um, it's a little bit different, uh, but you're going through Cal State Apply just the same. Exactly. So they, the Cal State Apply will tell you what you uh, need to have in terms of, and our international staff will be in touch with you in terms of uh, uh, visas and other documentation you might need. Yeah, I, I suggest if you, whenever you send me an email uh, to the MSCY, and if you didn't get any reply, I'll connect you with the international, and they are really quick in responding to you. Anytime a student international sends me an email and he has some question, I send it to, uh, to the international office and they quickly respond, right within a, an hour, I'd say. I mean, they don't even get to next year, the day to respond and ask you what it is that they can do for you to answer your question. So yeah, there is a, actually a team that can assist you to make sure that you, all your questions are answered. Okay. Uh, next is more curriculum based. Um, is there uh, is there research or project uh, uh, within the curriculum? Yeah, the last course, which is the like a, a master's project, actually requires you to do a, a capstone or a master project. So you whatever you learn through that uh, nine courses or twenty seven units prior to that. You get that knowledge together, and then you try to de develop a project. The, the idea is to for you to learn, because when we talk to the advisory council member, they say what they need from their employer. They want to be able to communicate. They want to be able to present, and they want to be able to actually do some work from start to the end. So you're going to do a project from start to end with the uh, you know, uh, help of the instructor and the guidance of the instructor through the process. And then you will do some presentations, you're going to do some write-up, and that actually provides you with the experience that you need to go to the workforce, to the real world. A lot of cases, those uh, reports that you generate becomes actually a good indication for the, uh, during the interview to show that you have done a work from a start to the end, and that's what they want. Remember, you go to work, they tell you, I have this problem, solve it. So you need to figure out the hardware, the software, the tools, and how to do it. And that last course that you have project, massive project, provide you with that practice to be able to see what is that you need to do and what are some of the uh, obstacles that you need to you know, uh, face and then be able to actually solve. That is problem solving skills that you get them all at the end. Okay, great. Uh, I'm gonna answer a couple of questions quickly. Uh, do we send our personal statement to uh, MSCY at csudhd.edu. The answer is yes. Um, uh, what is the acceptance rate for someone that does not have computer science degree but completes the leveling courses? Um, the idea is we work with you. Is basically we have response. actually remember that we developed this program, this massive program, because we want to make sure that a lot of students are actually want to be able to get to the field of cybersecurity. And what we want to make sure, we want to make sure that you get to the field, not just get a degree, but be able to learn. So that's why the leveling course is here, to make sure that you become actually expert in the area. So we have a lot of non-computer technology students who apply for the program, and they're actually being successful through the process as well. So you have a good chance of getting admitted as well. The okay. commitment is what we need, the commitment and making sure right. that you are committed. Right. So a related question, um, if the applicant doesn't have a bachelor's in a in a computer technology, um, but they have several years of experience uh, uh, and possibly industry certifications, 
uh, would there be consideration for them to be uh, admitted to the program without the leveling courses? Yes, yes, we do. We do require you to submit us the document and then the committee looks at it. And yes, there have been cases that those uh, 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 those uh, certification has uh, cut you off. Remember, we're not trying to force you to level in course. We try to make sure you pass through the graduate courses, smooth, have a smooth transition and be successful. So if you have the knowledge, you show us the knowledge with the documentation, I don't see any reason for you taking the course, the material that you already know. But that's not our purpose to get you to take course that is not necessary. Okay. Uh, next question, uh, do backlogs affect my chances of admission? Uh, I don't think there are any backlogs in our program, so no. uh, you, you'll know you'll know pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, what's the next question? Um, is there a thesis required to graduate? No, it's a project. It's a pro project. As I say, it's one of course, one semester project. Uh, thesis usually thesis usually means a year long uh, activity, and that, that's not what we have. Right. Um, let's see, what are the payment options available for the master's program? Well, uh, payment is due for each um, course as you, as you uh, enroll in it or as you register for it. Uh, there are different um, uh, financial assistance uh, uh, available the, through uh, Sally May, there are student loans and uh, ISSE also has a um, scholarships available. So there is some financial assistance that's uh, available. Um, let's see, let me just read this one. Uh, this article showcases IBM and their desperate need for security professionals. I've read that the pandemic has just amplified the urgency to find talent in this field. Are there partnerships with entities like IBM or projects within organizations like this that may be experienced as part of the coursework? Uh, we, we, as I said, we have some, uh, some of our faculty who are actually in the industry and they tell you what's going on. We, on the undergraduate program, we have two courses which has IBM like mainframe activities. But for the master's program, we actually talk about a little bit more general and talk about the, actually the tools that they need to be done. But if you're looking at the IBM, remember what, what uh, even the keynote speaker said, the certificate. And those certificates, many of them has nothing to do with the IBM. It has to do with how to keep the system secure and cloud. And cloud is something you need to learn how to do to secure it, no matter what mainframe it is in. So uh, the answer to your question, we don't have any specific, but there is some of the notions that the instructors bring up regarding to the IBM activities that's out there. But it's not a course just dedicated for IP. Got it, okay. Uh, from an international student, uh, is this considered a STEM degree for the purposes of OPT after graduation? Yes, it is a STEM program, it's a Master of Science. Okay, uh, so it would qualify. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, international students, do they need the TOEFL or the IELTS uh, to get into the program? I believe they do. That's, that's, a, that's a school requirement, yes. Okay. Um, Somebody's asking, can they take all the elected elective courses? Yes, why not? Yeah. Actually, <laughs> most of the students who are from another, they take those. Oh, you think all the elect? Yes, absolutely. We have few students because they just want to learn more because many of those courses just give you different uh, aspects. Yes, you need 30 units to get a degree, but some students, they take more of those. And I've seen many of them doing that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Um, let's see. Um, I think we've gone over just about everything. Uh, there are a couple of other things. Um, so if they have uh, CompTIA security, uh, can that substitute uh, for the leveling courses? Yes, please send it to us. Uh, we Remember, we wanna make sure that you have a little, a little bit of programming experience, a little bit of the math, a little bit of the security. So those three leveling courses, one is fundamentals that, that talks about the, uh, you know, a little bit of the programming and, uh, and, the, uh, and the math. The second one goes into the networking and the third one does cybersecurity. So we're looking at your, uh, 
uh, certificate and we look at your uh, transcript. And I'm sure with that, we will we'll tell you exactly what is needed. You definitely don't need to take this last two leveling courses. Okay. Um, we got a question. Uh, uh, how does one expect to succeed um, when uh, being persistent is being taken as uh, being a stalking or spam? Uh, I guess they're asking how to how to stay positive in the job search. Yeah, uh, you need to be positive. I mean, I, you know, I talked to the Google. We had we had a lot of uh, you know uh, communication and uh, partnership and relationship with Google Googlers, and then they were saying the average Googlers that they get hired there they apply three or four times. Persistence is indication of your commitment, so don't get discouraged. If the employers see that you apply and apply and apply, and then you every time you did it better than the other one, they see the commitment and that helps. So you shouldn't be discouraged at all. As I said, Googlers, they usually know that most of them, when I talk to them, majority of them, they say they applied three, four times they got hired. So it doesn't mean they just keep applying. You learn more and the next time you use it, what you learn and then bring it back to them. And then they see how useful. And that goes pretty much everywhere. Persistence, you need, you do not get discouraged. There is a lot of job opportunities and there is, I think there should be them worrying that won't be able to hire you. Not you worrying, but. Okay. Uh, what are you finding uh, for um, how long it's taking people to complete the program? We, we've had, as I said, we offer the courses during the spring, fall, and even summer. So just do the calculations. We offer usually five or six courses each semester, right? To make sure that students get the opportunity to finish it if they want in a one year. Take spring, fall, spring, and summer, or start summer, fall, and spring, however the combination is. But there are some who are working and they wanna take one or two courses. That might take them a year and a half or two years. So the courses are offered. The secret the schedule for the course offering is on, a, on, a, on our website. They know what courses offered what semester and the schedule stays there all the time. So you can see that and schedule based on your availability and the number of courses you can take. We, as I said, we have students who took a year, a year and a half, and some taking two years to finish it. Again, it might be two and a half. It just depends how often you want to take the courses and you have the opportunity to take any of those variations. Is there a time limit you would recommend uh, for taking all the courses in order to stay relevant? Yeah, I would say... Do not, I mean, you know, even if you take one class per uh, semester and summer, that would say in three years you finish and that should be okay. But remember, if you take three years, the field is changing constantly and you might not retake to some of the electives if it's just more than that, it takes more than that. But, you know, usually two years, two and a half years or three years at most should be good uh, range for you to finish. But more, more I see because of the job opportunity and students are excited to finish, they actually finish it within a year and a half from what I've seen so far. And that, uh, that brings an important point to uh, a feature of the, of the program. And that is, as you say, you teach people how to continuously learn as, as the field uh, uh, changes all the time. Right. Um, somebody's asking if any certifications can replace any of the electives in the program. Uh, no, 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 because th this is a, a school requirement that you have to have a certain number of degree, uh, courses that you have. Actually, many of our courses, it prepares you for the certification. So when you take those courses, not only the contents is there, the combination of a few courses, it prepares you to take the certification. And many of the students actually take this course and they take the test. They go take the test because they see they have all that knowledge in place. So the program covers the uh, actually fundamental information about the security, but also it had, because of the importance of the security and those tools and learning those, they have some uh, modules that if you get those two modules covered, you'll be able to easily uh, prepare yourself for the certification exam. Okay. Uh, another question, uh, is it possible to get internships while studying? Yes, yes, we, we've had students. We actually, a lot of internship opportunities come to us and we usually post it on our website and I personally email them to the students as well. And uh, we, we provide those opportunities, but 
you are the one who have to apply, but we have people who can help you. So if you have some uh, difficulty with preparing for the internship and how to fill out the form, we have people here that can help you to making sure that it makes it easy for you to do it. And then again, you might get the internship first time, you don't get it, do it second time. You might, you probably, you most probably gonna have a much better chance of getting it next time because you learn from the interview skills and all what you need to do. Again, persistence is the key, but we do provide you with some internship opportunities comes And there are many of them, there are plenty of them. Actually for the undergrad, we even have an internship that's on campus. So this is working in the IT department and they get actually real internship opportunities, real world applications. So when they get that, they can actually go apply to work. We have it for the undergrad, but uh, for the school, we don't have for the grad students. But now that you brought up, we might, during the pandemic has been a little bit difficult, but when the pandemic goes out, we might see that come back again. Okay. Um, I see there's a couple questions in the Q&A also that, um, are regarding people's individual circumstances. So, uh, you know, I would invite you if you have a if you have a particular question about your own background, your own uh, situation, please email mscy at csudh.edu, and then uh, we will get back to you with our uh, recommendations on how you should proceed. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> I just want to remind everybody of our contact info also. Uh, you can see it on the screen there. Uh, again, mscy at csudh.edu. There's also a phone number, 310-243-3398. And then uh, there is also contact information on the contact page of our cybersecurity master's program website. Uh, so um, with that, uh, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, the, we will remain uh, online for a few minutes until 12 noon in order to, um, for you to uh, take down any information you need to from the chat. Uh, and then, um, let's see, anything else, Mosin, you can think of to add? No, I want to thank everybody for attending this information session. And uh, please, Again, as Kate mentioned, if you have any question, feel free to send the email to mscy at csudh.edu. It's a great program. You get to learn a lot through the program and we'll be more than happy to uh, answer any question you might have. Very good. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, have a great day. We will hopefully see you in the program. Good day. <laughs>